Well, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today I want to discuss how to keep your tower from looking like this. So this tower was about an 80 foot tower. It failed um, probably about two to three months ago. I'm trying to remember the exact timeline. We got a report from one of the folks that, hey, the uh, repeater out there quit working, and one of them happened to be out in that area and drove up there and saw it in that condition. And so we, I went up there and looked at it, and it was pretty obvious that um, there had been a pretty significant windstorm. So there's some contributing factors as to why this tower fell. But I want to jump into one of the main reasons. Like I said, there was a windstorm, a wind event that happened up there uh, late spring, uh, a couple weird storms rolled through. We out at our place, we had 50, 60 mile an hour winds. In fact, it was right in the middle of putting the walls up to um, my new office area. I had to go put additional braces on those walls because I was afraid they were gonna come down. So in the middle of that storm, I was out there putting additional braces on. So it was a pretty wild storm and it rolled right through the same area that that tower was in and then it came towards uh, our house. So. Along with it, at the elevation that tower's at, which I think is about 6,500 feet, if I remember right, they had ice with it. So there was trees down all over the place up there. It did damage to a lookout tower up there. It, it was a pretty nasty storm. With that said, that tower, the radio tower, should have stood. And I want to address this uh, to a lot of ham folks out here because I see this kind of thing on um, ham towers all the time. And this tower was built in 1979, so it lasted 41 years. But the way the guys were put on is the main contributing factor as to why that fell. So this is the guy that failed. As you can see, it looks like it just ripped apart. And what really happened here was this was broke probably well uh, in advance to that windstorm. At least it was fractured down below here on the lower strands. And let me explain why that happened. I've seen a total of six Roan 45 tower failures in my just shy of 30 years being in um, the land mobile radio business. One, um, there's really no explanation of why it failed. It was kind of strange. We went up there, kept fighting a descents problem, and we just could not track that descents problem down. Come to find out, uh, evidently something on that tower was cracked where we couldn't see it. And that was probably what was causing the descents too, is creating a little diode junction where there was a crack. And sure enough, middle of winter, that tower came down. All the guy wires were still intact. It just collapsed on itself. So that was one uh, tower out of the six I've seen collapse. The other five were all guy wire failures of one type or another. Now the one can't really count a guy, it, kind of a funny story, the tower had failed once before due to a guy wire problem. I think a tree fell across the guy wire, broke it, and then the tower came over. But then the second tower that went up in its place, uh, we uh, were up there putting a new building in, and a guy on a dozer was up there kind of flattening a spot for the new building. He caught one of the guy wires with his, uh, his ROPs on his, uh, on his dozer and snapped it, and of course the tower came over again. So... What's up there now is no longer a guide tower. In fact, we don't put guide towers in at my work anymore uh, just because of all the headaches you have with them up on mountaintops. They don't get enough maintenance. Guide towers take quite a bit of maintenance. So with that said, let's talk about this particular guy wire problem and why I've seen four other towers fail for something very similar to this. Now, it used to be pretty much the industry standard to fold the guy wire over like this, use cable clamps, and you just, I, I can't stress enough that this puts a tremendous amount of strain on guy wire that's meant to be stiff, tough, strong, but it doesn't like to bend in these tight bends like this. They used to use thimbles about this size. You can see that was probably the same size thimble that used to be in here, if not a little smaller that was in here. I've seen, uh, towers with these put on without thimbles. They just run through um, whether they had uh, torque arms on them or just a big ring up here that they attach to. So I've seen quite a few towers. They have this big ring that a bolt goes through one side and then this attaches, they just wrapped it over that uh, ring 
And so it creates quite a bit of tension right in that one particular point. And unfortunately, when these go bad, it's not the outside strands that break, it's the inside where it's bent the tightest and it's rubbing against something. Those break where you can't see them. In fact, this particular tower, about eight, 10 years ago, we'd replaced the bottoms of the guys uh, with something because we noticed they were cracked in a few spots. Uh, they didn't have any thimbles at all on them. And so they were cracked, so we replaced the bottom ends. And in fact, this tower had been professionally inspected last fall, and they didn't see this problem either. And if you look closely at these guy, at this where it broke, half of these are about rusted. The bottom ones that were broke, they're rusted in there. So only the outside ones were holding. And when that wind event come along, it just kind of finished it off. So how can you avoid this problem? Well, there's a couple things. If you insist on using these uh, guide clamps or these uh, cable clamps and wrapping the guy wire over like this, which I strongly recommend you don't, make sure you've got the proper size thimbles. These bigger thimbles will reduce the, the possibility of creating stress fractures right inside that bend. Now there's a better way to do this, and this is what we did to replace the bottom ends of these. And that's use a preformed grip. These things are the best things in sliced bread if you're putting up guide towers. And how this works is these wrap around the guy wire itself, and these are already preformed in the nice bend. They're made to bend. They're made to go around a thimble, just like this. Greatly reduces the chance of having a problem right here at this point. Now these things, they're not they're not super expensive. They're not super cheap either. I'm trying to remember what the cost is. I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say they're about 12 bucks each, but how much are you going to pay for clamps and uh, all the headache with cable clamps when you could just as easily put these on? Now these things, this is for, I believe this is for quarter inch guy wire. Um, this one is a little bigger. It's for uh, 3 16 if I remember right. No, this is quarter inch. Got to get my figure straight here. And what is this one for? This one's 3 16 I have my numbers backwards. This is 3 16 This is quarter inch. And they're color coded with different paint markings on them so you don't pick up the wrong one and try and use it on the wrong guy wire. Plus they have this handy little tags on them that tell you what size cable they're for. Don't try and use the small one on bigger cable and don't try and put the bigger one on smaller cable because it will not hold. Now this stuff has a very, I want to say it's silica. I can't remember off the top of my head what's inside of these, but it's very grippy. You wrap these on and I've had uh, people ask, well, how do you get these? How does this thing work? Well, you wrap one side on. I usually do the short side first. If you can see there, one's just slightly longer than the other one. You wrap the short side on and then wrap the other side on and the colors will match up if you've done it right. The little paint stripes will match up as you wrap it and you wrap it clear up to the end. Now some of these come with a clamp that goes on the end of these. I shouldn't call it a clamp. It's kind of a compression fitting that once you get this on it crimps on here and keep somebody from unwinding it because uh, you know people are dumb and will do dumb things. The other thing it helps with is if you get a big block of ice on your guy wire and it comes sliding down and hits this just right, it can unwrap these or it just folds them out. I've seen that on two occasions that these things, and they actually had the uh, clamp on them too, so it must have been a heck of a hunk of ice that hit them, but it had folded these things out and just splayed them. Now, the last three or four wraps held it just fine for the winter, but we did have to, have to go back and replace those. So. That's something to think of. Uh, on my towers at home, I don't put the crimps on. I don't get that large of amount of ice to worry about, and I'm not worried about somebody coming out there and unwrapping them. It's kind of your personal choice. Now, I think the brand name on these are Big Grips. There's a couple different companies that make these things. But these, if these were on the upper end of that tower, I'm 90% confident that that tower would still be standing today with the proper size thimbles. Don't use these dinky little thimbles because they're, they just won't work with these kind of cables or any kind of cable for that matter. Just 
I don't know why Roan ever sold these little dinky thimbles, but don't use them. Um, if you're a ham guy putting up tower, do not use these dinky little thimbles. Get the right size thimbles and it'll save you probably your life down the road. Climbing towers that have these little thimbles. Let me, let me tell you a story real quick. I've climbed up a couple different towers where they use these. I go up there and these darn things through the wind and vibration over the years, if you get a little slack in the cable at all, these things will work themselves out from underneath the edge of the guy wire. So then the guy wire winds up sitting just right on whatever this is supposed to be on. And again, you're gonna create a friction point. You're going to have problems there. So avoid these things at all costs. I, I can't stress that enough. Do not use these dinky little thimbles. Also, if you go to the hardware store, don't buy the cheapest thimble you can buy. Buy a good thimble. I suggest buying the ones made by Roan. Roan sells these big thimbles now. They have for years. You'll still see these running around. Don't use them. Get these big ones because that's, they work perfect with these preforms. And if you insist on running the guy wire over these, these are much better than the thimble, the small thimbles. So I want to point out something else. If I know hams are the probably the most frugal bunch of people I've ever met in my entire life. Frugal is one word. Uh, cheap. Let's let's just say what it is. Uh, they want to put up this tower that would normally, like if a commercial operation went and did it, it would probably cost tens of thousands of dollars, and they want to do it for five hundred dollars or less. Well, the way they get these towers for five hundred dollars or less is they wind up finding one in somebody's backyard or some one that's been abandoned, and they offer to go take it down, and. That, I understand the temptation to do it. I've done it myself. And I've also turned down taking down a number of these. I found some on Craigslist. Hey, somebody just come take this thing down. I went and inspected. I'm like, no, nope, sorry. Uh, if you want to pay for a crane or something, I'll come help you take it down and I'll, I'll take it. But I'm not climbing that thing. The reason being is guys, especially guide towers, and that's normally what hams are going to be after is a guide tower of some kind is the guy points, you, you just don't know how they were installed, whether they were installed correctly or incorrectly. I've known two different people now, uh, personally people that I've known, that have been up on towers that have failed due to guy wire or guy point problems. Both of them survived, both of them were hurt pretty bad. Uh, one was a very experienced tower climber, had a world-class contest station, and he was helping a guy I don't even think he was wanting the tower. I think he was just helping this guy that needed some help taking his tower down. He was getting older. Now I'm going off of memory here, so bear with me. And I think he just got up there and one of the, I don't remember exactly what failed, but something down at the guy point at the ground level had, they were down to the last set of guys and it failed, fell, if I could talk today, it failed and the tower fell. It kind of uh, accordioned itself down and that's probably what saved his life. And usually when a tower, a guide tower falls, they usually do accordion themselves down. A, a part of it will go this way and then it'll collapse and it'll just kind of accordions itself down. And fortunately, he, I think he was up about 35, 40 feet when that happened. And it broke a number of ribs and uh, didn't do his body any good. And, uh, he wasn't young and sprightly by any stretch of the imagination. And the other guy uh, that it happened to, he was a little bit younger. Uh, a lot less experience and um, I think he was up about 30 feet and what had happened was the guy he was taking down a tower that somebody else had put in and he went out there to take it down for free and the guy point for the the lower set of guys I think it had two sets of guys they got the first 50 60 feet down without any problem got down to that lower set and took the, you know, they'd already taken the upper set off and they got down around that, uh, that lower guy point and it was anchored to a tree evidently. And it just pulled out of the tree and it, uh, that one kind of fell. And fortunately it kind of fell into another set of trees and slowed the descent. And I think he wound up, if I remember right, he broke a leg and he did something to his shoulder, but you know, it, both of them were very lucky to have just survived 
those accidents. So what I'm saying is a free tower may cost you a lot more than uh, what you think. The, the, I just can't stress that enough. If you're going to go take somebody else's tower down, you don't know how that thing was put up. Hold on just a second. Sorry, I had to go chase the shade down a little bit. Uh, the sun moved on me. So if you're going to take a tower down that somebody else put up, you don't know how those guys were put in. I strongly suggest putting a temporary set of guys in uh, for each guy point you're working at. So like if you're at, say a 90 foot tower, it should have three sets of guys on it. If you're working up there and taking that first 30 feet down on that second guy point at the 60 foot level, put temporary guys in, use rope, use static kermanal rope or something that does not have any stretch to it. Anchor it. You park rigs out there, park something out there to help stabilize that. Just because you just don't know what's going to happen. I suggest doing it at least, at, say a 90 foot tower, on the middle set of guys and the bottom guys. A lot of times you can get survive with um, the top set of guys come loose on you. But the bottom guys are fairly, <laughs> bottom and middle are pretty important on most towers. Uh, another story. Uh, I was helping uh, a very well known ham. Uh, back, I was probably in my, I'm going to say low 20s, and uh, he was getting ready to move, and he needed a little extra help taking. He had a, a, quite a large amount of towers at his place, and uh, we were up on top of, um, if I remember right, the bottom 40 feet was some four-legged tower, and then they had made a plate, and then it went up, I want to say 180 feet total. So the top part of it was Roan 45. The bottom part was this four-legged thing. I, I don't remember what kind of tower it was. And so between the, there was, I think, at least four to five sets of guys on that thing. And we were up at the top. We'd taken the large antennas off, large HF antennas, and lowered those down to the ground. We were getting ready to start working on unbolting some things. And little did we know, the ground crew had taken those top set of guys off off their anchor points completely and i'm sitting up there and i'm like wow i'm i'm starting to get motion sickness here what is going on and i don't get motion sickness very easy so i stuck my head kind of lined my head up with a tower and compared it to a big old pine tree that was out there and i could tell we were doing this and i looked up and i'm, I'm not going to use any names if you're watching you know who you are uh, i looked up he was right above me and i said uh, hey i think uh the guys were loose and I looked down that sure enough, they brought all the guys in and, um, he was pretty upset. I mean, he, uh, he started yelling at those guys, hook those blankety blank guy wires back up. So we were up there swaying around. I want to say we were up about 50 feet of unguide tower there. And the original plan was I would help him set up the gin pole and get it ready. I would shimmy down to the next set of guys while he undid the first couple sections because we knew there was a lot of free floating tower up there and we didn't want both of us up there on it. So anyway, I shimmied down as quick as I could down to that next set of guys, but Roan tower is actually incredibly strong. But if you take the wrong, get the wrong set of guys to fail on you, usually the top set, you can get away with it to a degree, except in a windstorm and uh and survive but if you the middle set and the bottom set uh, can really be a problem for you if one of those fail while you're up on the tower i know i'm dragging this out quite a bit but what i want to stress is if you're going to take down a tower put temporary guys on it if you don't know how those guys were put in place you don't know if they use these stupid things up on the tower and you can't tell from the ground and you can't tell if they ran the guy wire over the top of these. You don't know what kind of condition that guy wire is underneath. You can't see it. And that's where they break. So if you're taking those down, please, please do yourself a favor. Do everybody a favor. Your family, they don't want to see you dead. Put temporary guys on if you're taking towers down. And by the way, if you're taking down, usually this first set of guys is between 30, 35 feet, somewhere in there if they, it was put up right. And so once you get to that, I suggest put a set of temporary guys down about 20 feet. I don't care if that thing says it'll freestand to 40 feet. You don't know how the concrete was put in. I know Bob told you that, it, oh, I put two yards of concrete in there. It's not going to move. Are you going to trust it? Did you see him personally do it? Put temporary guys in if you're doing this stuff. 
And once you put your tower back up, once you get your free tower or tower you paid very little for, make sure you inspect every section of that. Make sure it was never involved in a tower collapse. Let me tell you about this tower that was up on this radio site. Even though some of the sections looked straight, there was not a piece of that that did not have broken welds on it somewhere. Completely unusable. I made sure that was cut up and could never be used again. If a tower has been involved in a collapse, don't use it. You just, you can't trust it. There, there can be hidden problems, especially some of these Rhone towers have been along, around for a long time. There can be very thin walls left in parts of that from corrosion from the inside out. So be super careful using these old towers. Please take my advice. If you're going to put one back up, use the proper size thimble. Get yourself some big grips, some preformed grips. Put those on. It'll save you a lot of hassle. Now, if you want to see a video on how to do preform clamps or preform grips and how you put them on, just let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to do a short video on how to do those. They're fairly easy. The hardest part is finding the cable grabs uh, so you can grab the cable and put some tension on it with a come along uh, so you can get these grips put on and wrap through the turnbuckles. But it's it's still a pretty easy process. And there's a way around if you don't if you don't have access to borrow some of those cable grabs. There's, there's other ways to do it and I, I can briefly go into that. So just let me know in the comments if you want to see that. So what made me prompt, prompt me to do this video was just this morning I watched um, a ham club post a video about uh, a tower climbing exercise they were doing up at a site. And it kind of brought this back to mind that, hey, I ought to put out a video to show what happened to that tower. But I also want to just briefly touch on tower safety. The guy that looked like he was going to be climbing the tower. Now, they didn't show actually tower climbing that on that video. They were just prepping to do tower climbing. But the guy looked like he had a rock climbing harness on. Guys, it's not worth your life using inferior gear to climb towers. If you're going to go through the hassle of climbing towers, get the proper gear, use the proper safety equipment. Rock climbing harnesses are not proper safety equipment. Those are for positioning. They're not for fall, arrest, or safety. The old climb belts that linemen used to wear, and climbing uh, poles. I, I started with a belt like that a long time ago. But I haven't used one in, man, I don't even know how many years. There's much better approaches. Full body harness shock absorbing lanyards every year i see hams uh get killed on towers and i don't want to see you guys killed on towers there's there's easy ways to avoid it i'm thinking about putting out a video i used to be a climbing instructor for uh tower safety and i'm thinking about putting out a short uh, video series on tower safety and the proper equipment to use it's not it's not going to cost you that much more to get the the correct equipment and so be careful, guys, out there. If you're getting used towers, and I don't blame you, they're, they're, they're cheap, just be careful. Be really, really careful. And if uh, it, it looks sketchy at all, hire a crane or have them hire a crane. It's not worth your life, trust me. Okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching, subscribing. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Always like comments. And we'll see you guys on the next video.